legends. I am the knight. I am Batman. These videos are not for children. If you're a children, then piss off. Hey there, it's me, your least favorite YouTuber, the Infuso. And this video isn't about a bat. It's about the goat. I'm talking about the greatest Bruce Wayne of our time or any time thereafter. And dare I say, the undisputed definitive Batman. Because if there is an argument to be made that Kevin Conroy isn't the best Batman there ever was, then I haven't heard it. Voicing the character for three decades in more than two handfuls of projects. We're talking cartoons, TV shows, shorts, movies, video games. He performed the role more than anyone else ever has, more than anybody else ever will, and more than anyone else would ever be asked to. He is widely accepted as the absolute best, and it's not very hard to see why. Because Kevin Conroy didn't just play a part, he defined a role for several generations of fans. He set a standard that every other Batman is held up to. He was the bar setter, the unattainable goal. Kevin's impact on the character can't be understated. He didn't just put on a performance, he gave a character a voice. There were actors who played the part both in voice acting and in live action before him, but none of them are nearly as iconic. And I truly think that he gave the most authentic performance anyone has ever given and anyone could ever hope to give to The Dark Knight. Being the first man to create a separation between Batman and Bruce Wayne. As Bruce, he sounded naturally charming, confident to the point of becoming a little bit cocky. And being that Bruce Wayne in nature is just a disguise, he'd more often than not sound realistically oblivious and naive. Of course, Bruce Wayne is just a front that Batman uses to probe those he comes in contact with for information, as Bruce knew that you could learn a lot more by playing dumb than you could by showing off smart. What I really love about this version of Bruce Wayne is that it was a believable front, but it didn't go so far as to destroy the persona's reputation. It did what it needed to do without going a step too far. You wouldn't believe that this Bruce Wayne was in fact Batman. The guy wasn't smart enough to be Batman, he wasn't strong enough to be Batman, he wasn't selfless enough to be Batman. But he also wasn't written to be cruel or crude in the public eye. Of course, ultimately, he really only showed interest in being in the public eye when it was to investigate Incognito. This Bruce Wayne didn't come across as a bad guy but instead a rather delusional one who rarely steps outside his bubble. This made for an interesting development, because what we got was a Bruce Wayne who wasn't above doing good deeds without a mask on. He made for a very fair and balanced billionaire. I really appreciate this little self-crossover. Watching the alter ego of the character actually melt into or break through the secret identity. Kevin managed to make Bruce seem arrogant and maybe even a little bit ignorant in the public but never to the point of full-on villainy. In short, this Bruce Wayne wasn't a bad guy. What's unfortunate about all of this is that I think that this side of the character is forgotten in comparison to how incredible the other half of this role is. But I do think regardless, this deserves some level of praise. Unfortunately, it wouldn't all be like this, as Bruce Wayne the public figure is probably the least interesting part of Batman. So gradually over time, we'd see less and less of his betrayal of this part of the role. But to be fair, the name of the brand isn't Bruce Wayne. In contrast, Kevin Conroy had a completely different voice for the role of Batman. One that commanded attention from audiences and demanded fear from the thugs that he'd encounter. Kevin's Batman was stern and stoic, and yet he could perfectly articulate the character's feelings at any given moment. The character may have mostly been monotone, but Kevin had such a great emotional range that came through with each and every line. You always knew what his Batman was feeling, even if he mostly spoke in one of two tones, those being harsh and harsher. There was something so effortlessly powerful and imposing about this performance. His voice could strike fear in the heart of superstitious cowardly lots, but it never sounded like he was trying to sound scary. He came across as naturally intimidating, a force you didn't want to reckon with. And it wasn't just the sound of his voice, it was the confidence in the way that he spoke, as if all that he said was a certainty. When he issued a threat, you believed it. His interrogations always felt incredibly legitimate because the fear he was met with was well warranted. 
This Batman was an imposing figure of justice. A scary sight if you were on the wrong side of the law. Kevin's voice created the perfect mystique for a character who at times could be more of a symbol than he was a man. Even beyond terrorizing terrorists, this Batman was powerful. His strength was incomparable to others. I mean, sure, physically Superman could take him, but mentally this man was unstoppable. The legacy the character had built up was not that of mere mortal men. He sounded sage-like in his speeches. He was an authority figure with an incredible sense of control, fathering over a surrogate family, acting as trainer, mentor, and dad to those he shared a cave with. A lot of the time, when people think of Batman, they seem to think of vengeance. And it's somewhat warranted. That is definitely a part of the character. But that's not the only part of that character. And if you ever found yourself questioning that, then look no further than this Batman's incredible, immeasurable amount of compassion. He always had a soft spot for others, no matter how rough his exterior was. The guy always had his guard up, and he would never fully let on just how much he cared with words, but instead with his actions. And that also made the few kind words he did share that much more meaningful. This Batman was a true humanitarian. He was always doing good deeds through a hidden veil, never once seeking credit for his right doings. And I personally think that that speaks a lot about the masked man who doesn't speak a lot. Because it's not who you act like in the light, but rather who you are in the dark that defines you. Some of the character's greatest moments in the series don't come from him beating up bizarre bad guys, but instead come from comforting others in their darkest moments. We're not just talking about civilians and protégés. Batman met his enemies with the same level of empathy that he met his closest allies with. He was selfless to a fault. He was a man who spent a lifetime taking bullets that weren't aimed at him, eating punches that weren't thrown his way initially, stopping revenge plots that he wasn't the target of. This Batman was so altruistic in nature that if anyone else was in the role, it might seem fictitious. The character's actions are just a little bit too good to be true. But with Kevin in the role, you never once question this Batman. Because even at his most far-fetched, he never seemed anything but legitimate. Batman on the animated series was also never painted as the paragon of perfection. He was a flawed individual. He made mistakes. He wasn't exempt from rushed or rash decisions from time to time. On occasion, he'd even do something that he'd later regret. But he would still go out of his way to try to make it right. Even if there was no realistic way of doing so. So while Kevin Conroy as Batman was pretty perfect... Kevin Conroy's Batman himself was not. He wasn't some faultless, flawless figure of all that was good. He was just a man. This was a Batman that represented mankind. Warts and all. A mortal man who was in real mortal danger every night. It's been said a thousand times over, including by Kevin Conroy himself, but when it comes to Batman, especially this Batman, Batman is the man, Bruce Wayne is the mask. While he may have been born Bruce Wayne, it's not his true chosen identity. Bruce Wayne is the performance that he puts on in public to disguise his true nature, his real identity. And when Bruce Wayne puts on that Batman mask, that's when he's truly himself. In his private moments, the few that he has, not only does he very often wear his mask, even in some moments when it doesn't really make sense to, but it's also the voice that he speaks in. That's because this is his real voice. The show doesn't really suggest this, it kind of comes right out and says it. Hey, what's up, Doc? You have bats, Mr. Wayne. Appreciate the help, Doc. I'll return the favor next time you're raising funds. Bye-bye. This computer checked that we have ourselves at an incongruity. Incongruity, Alfred? He's lying. And I'm gonna find out why. I won't have Wayne Enterprises involved in an operation that destroys a rainforest. Shut it down or you're gone. One of my greedy directors made a deal. I hate it when things slip by me. I said to them, you know, he's the wealthiest man in Gotham. He's the most eligible bachelor. Everyone knows him. He's got the big house on the hill. How can this guy put on a cape and a cowl and no one knows him? That's just impossible. Why don't you let me do two voices? And let me use my own voice for Bruce Wayne. And then I'll use the voice that I used in the audition for Batman. So that's where the two voice idea came up. 
This fact is made that much more clear later on in Batman Beyond, when an elderly Bruce Wayne hears voices, and he's only able to tell that they're not internal because... The voice kept calling me Bruce. In my mind, that's not what I call myself. What do you call yourself? All of this is packed into one role. One role that admittedly is divided into two, what with the dual identities and all. This was a lot to ask of any actor. Kevin pulled it off. He not only managed to bring a legend to life, but also humanize him and ground him in reality. Explore a truth and a depth to this character that nobody had before. And because of that, I think more than in any other Batman performance both before or after, this Batman felt the most like a man. He felt like a real person, a deeply troubled, well-meaning, socially disconnected outsider that looked down on the city he lived in and the civilians that inhabited it rather than walk amongst them. A man whose past trauma still haunted him and dictated both his present and his future. With Kevin Conroy, Batman felt real. Kevin Conroy made this 2D character feel very three-dimensional. On top of perfecting both sides of the character and defining it for generations to come, the character never stopped developing. It was constantly progressing through the Tim and Deaniverse timeline. We watched this Batman grow up and grow old and pass the torch eventually. And even in his later years when his body failed him, he continued to contribute to crime fighting. Becoming the mentor and an extra set of eyes when future Batman Terry McGinnis took over. Serving somewhat of an oracle role in this particular story. It's very much what Ned would describe as a guy in the chair situation. So when this Bruce Wayne had next to nothing left, he still gave all that he could for the greater good. This Bruce Wayne is much more experienced. His bitterness has only been that much more amplified over time. From a lifetime of bad experiences and sad situations, he's much more sour than he was when he was younger. You have to understand that this Batman is one that has lost almost everyone he loved, whether that be physically, emotionally, or mentally. At this point, Bitter Bruce is alone with his memories. Everyone has either left him or died off. No wife, no kids, and no friends to speak of. Well, unless you count Ace. He's living out what may be his last days as an unseen hermit. The man who once lurked in the shadows of Gotham City is now stationed in the shadows of Wayne Manor. The world around him slowly passed him by, and yet he was seemingly indifferent to it but still felt the need to involve himself in heroics. Because Batman isn't just a mask. It's a state of mind, a lifestyle, an identity, his identity. And while the legacy of Batman may live on without him, much like Bruce Wayne to comic book fans, Kevin Conroy will always be Batman. What also definitely deserves praise is the chemistry that he had with all of the cast of Batman the Animated Series. How perfectly he and Mark Hamill played off of each other. How well he and Tara Strong worked together. The banter and back and forths between he and Lauren Lester. Everyone Kevin worked with on the show worked wonders with him, and vice versa. What I truly think is remarkable here, though, is the time that we get with this character. Kevin's time in the role was a remarkable combination of both quality and quantity. He's voiced the character more than anybody else, and there's a good reason for that. Because the studio figured, why create another interpretation of the character when we have the definitive version of this character right here? Following Batman the Animated Series, Kevin would go on to portray the character in all different media related to the show. He played Batman in multiple movies, continued voicing Batman in various video games over the years. He even played Batman in other TV shows. There's a whole timeline, a whole universe, filled with this Batman. But that's far from the only fictional universe with him as the voice of Batman. Because Kevin Conroy wound up voicing this specific version of the character outside of his continuity, lending his legendary vocal cords to the role yet again in Teen Titans Go and Scooby-Doo and Guess Who. And most recently, the multiverses. I really appreciate these appearances because it allowed Kevin to play the role he made famous but under a different light. And we saw that this specific serious Batman could also be played for laughs. This was a perfect performance that would have been more than enough to validate the claim of Kevin being the greatest Batman of all time. But as if to solidify that opinion and turn that into a matter of fact, 
liked. Kevin would go on to voice the character in the equally iconic Arkham series. I can't really talk in depth about his performance in Arkham without unnecessarily repeating myself, because pretty much what could be said for his time in the Arkham series is a copy and paste of what could be said about his time in Batman the Animated Series. As a matter of fact, I can't continue to talk about Kevin's performance in any of these without sounding overly repetitive. The performance didn't change from canon to canon because it never needed to. There was something that was truly timeless and certain about Kevin's take on the character. After its initial run, it didn't improve over time because there wasn't anything to improve upon. Kevin understood the character and perfectly personified it. And he'd also play the character in other video game continuities as well, like in Injustice where he played two separate versions of the Dark Knight from different Earths. Or DC Universe Online where his Batman looks like... this. He and fellow DCAU alum would reunite in the Superman Batman animated movies, Justice League Doom, and Justice League Flashpoint Paradox. Interestingly enough, he'd also portray Christian Bale's version of the Dark Knight in the movie Gotham Knight, which was an animated anthology that took place in between Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. He'd voice the character yet again in Justice League Action, as well as play Batman in various shorts and even storyboards for other movies over the years. He'd also play the Batman of Zurinar on Batman the Brave and the Bold. But his work with the Caped Crusader didn't end there. In 2019, the unthinkable happened. After voicing the role for close to three decades, Kevin Conroy was given the ability to play the role in live action, appearing once more as an elderly Bruce Wayne, with a decidedly much more cynical and sinister twist. This Bruce Wayne was unlike any other version of the character Kevin Conroy ever portrayed. He was a deeply jaded Bruce who had lost his way and went rogue. A former Batman who broke his code and just continued breaking it. Taking the lives of villains and other heroes alike. A Batman who lacked any remorse for his moral failings. A Batman who had lost his hope in humanity and wasn't looking for it after. It was a shockingly different take on the character for sure, and furthermore, the character that Kevin played. I know some fans had their issues with this, not necessarily with Conroy's performance, but instead with the use of the iconic actor. But honestly, I think the fact that this ever happened is still something worth celebrating. Seeing Kevin Conroy live and in the flesh play the character he's voiced for decades left me speechless. This was something I never thought I'd see, and it's something that he himself never thought would be a possibility. Never thought I'd get a chance to do it on camera, because I was getting older and older and older. I was sort of aging out of Batman, you know? But luckily, I aged into old Bruce Wayne. <laughs> you can tell that he was really excited about the prospect of playing the part in person. I should also note that this take on the Dark Knight isn't unmerited. This version of the character didn't originate in this CW special. There are elements used for this variant of the Dark Knight that were assembled using plenty of other Batman interpretations. His thought process isn't unlike another aged Batman of the future. His views on Superman and his perception on how he bows to authority rather than his own moral compass is practically taken right out of the Dark Knight Returns. It's also not unlike his mentality in Batman v Superman, which was also heavily inspired by that very comic. His appearance is taken from another very popular comic, which also included an elderly Bruce Wayne held together by Exoskeleton, that being the graphic novel Kingdom Come. Outside of his work as Batman, he's also appeared in many other Batman continuities as other characters within continuity. Playing Dick Grayson's father John in The Batman, playing Bruce's father Thomas in Batman vs. Robin, and playing the Phantom Stranger in Batman the Brave and the Bold. And his time in the role still hasn't come to an end as it's now confirmed that Kevin Conroy did lend his voice to Batman in the upcoming Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League game. And who even knows if that's the last time we'll hear that voice coming out of that character. Kevin personified Batman, and will forever be embedded into the history of this character. The two have a very symbiotic relationship, because Batman made Kevin Conroy's career, and Kevin Conroy helped make Batman's legacy. When a lot of people think of Batman, they think of Kevin Conroy as Batman. When I read comics, it's his voice I hear in my head when I'm reading that dialogue. Whenever a new Batman voice actor is cast, this is the unachievable performance that they're inevitably compared to. It's the performance that most voice actors try to duplicate or at least emulate. 
Kevin Conroy did so much more than just play a character. He defined what it meant to play that character. There are many other good and even great Batman performances both in live action and in animation, and I don't think any of them even come remotely close to Kevin's work. There are other Batmans out there that I like and even some that I love, but each of them really feel like an actor playing a part. Which, you know, to be fair, they are. And for the record, some of them play that part very, very well. But Kevin Conroy didn't feel like he was playing a part. Kevin Conroy felt like he was that part. Like he was the character. All these other actors are just playing Kevin Conroy playing Batman. But Kevin Conroy, he was the real deal. The definitive Batman. It seems to me like a very big reason why he was so indescribably awesome in the role is because he felt what the character felt. In 2022's DC Pride, Kevin Conroy wrote a story that shared his own experiences. And like Bruce Wayne, he too had a rough upbringing filled with heartbreak and tragedy. Which, by the way, I would really recommend getting your hands on a copy and checking it out for yourself. Having a troubled family life, looking after his mentally ill brother after his alcoholic father's suicide attempt, living his life as a gay man during the AIDS epidemic, Watching as those closest to him withered away in pain, never knowing if he himself would come down with that same sickness, living with the fear that what took his friends would take him next. Kevin, like Bruce, dealt with incredible hardships that no one should ever have to endure. When he grew up, people were far less accepting of one's sexuality. What's celebrated now was condemned back then. And because of this, Kevin grew up closeted, living with a secret that was deeply tied into his identity that he could never share. Bruce too had deep secrets about his identity, cloaking himself in a public persona while keeping his true self hidden in private. Kevin's real life secrecy and suffering informed the character. This Batman felt real because the pain behind that voice was real. All of that came from a very real place. Kevin related to the character on levels most people would never fully be able to. In some ways, it feels like he gave a part of himself to create this performance. He opened himself up and shared with us some of his life experience through Bruce Wayne, through Batman. He took all the bad that life threw at him and he used it to create something great. Just as Bruce's agony turned him into a hero for Gotham City, Kevin's agony turned him into a hero to the world. Amongst his incredible work and all that he did to define the character, what shouldn't go understated is his own character. While I didn't know Kevin personally, from everything I've ever seen or heard about the guy, he was an incredibly pleasant person. I have never heard so much as one negative interaction or encounter with him. He was a kind man who just wanted to share his passion with the world and help others find the inspiration that they've been looking for. There was a very energetic enthusiasm that went into everything that he did, even something simple like a cameo, giving thoughtful, insightful answers to the questions that he was asked, or acting the holy hell out of my outro. Seriously, I will never be able to articulate just how much that meant to me, that he put so much effort into making that. It's like the modern day equivalent to having a celebrity record the message to your answering machine. And he treated it like he was going in to read lines with Mark Hamill. I've been working on a very big, very in-depth video on Batman the Animated Series as a whole. It's taken me a really long time, and it's still gonna take a really long time for that to come out. And in that video, I asked a bunch of the cast members what the show meant to them. And today, I'd like to share with you the response Kevin Conroy gave me. V, this is Kevin Conroy. Uh, you know me as Batman. I am vengeance. <laughs> um, I got your message and your uh, request. What does uh, Batman the Animated Series mean to me? That's a very loaded question. And I bet you get a lot of uh, different responses from everybody. Because everyone has a unique relationship to the show. I think what surprised me most when I started doing it was the connection that people have to the character, the audience. There's a passionate um, connection there. It's very unique. It's not like that for Superman or Wonder Woman or The Flash or any of the other superheroes. There's a really unique I identity that people have with Batman. Um, 
And I asked myself early on, why is that? The best reason I could come up with is because of all the superheroes, he's the one who's not a superhero. He's the one who's got nothing supernatural to rely on. He can't fly, he can't see through walls. He's a man and he's a very damaged man. He's been beat up by life, brutally seeing his parents murdered in front of him as a child. What's unique about him is how he reacts to that, to the brutality of life. He doesn't let it make him angry or bitter or crush him. He takes that pain and he uses it to transform himself into something uh, magnificent, into like this angel uh, of, of redemption, wanting to heal the world of evil, which is of course impossible, but he wants to leave the world a better place. And he only has his physical strength to do it. So to me, what Bitaz represents is a redemption story, overcoming the tragedies of life, the challenges of life, and overcoming it in a very noble way, so that you want to heal the world of evil. Um, it's a very ennobling uh, story. And that is why I think people react so passionately to him because we all get challenged by life. We all get beat up by life. Fate is so random. You don't know what's coming tomorrow or next month or next year. You have no control over that. But what you do have control over is how you react to it. You can let those surprises that life throws at you crush you, make you angry, make you bitter, or you can learn from them and take that knowledge and get back into life and contribute to the world. That is a choice we all face every day because we're human and we all stumble in our lives. We all make mistakes, but that's not what defines us. What defines us is how we get back up, how we learn from our mistakes and get back into life. That's what defines us. So that's what Batman the Animated Series meant to me and means to me, is that ability to absorb life's shocks and those curveballs that life throws at you and turn them into something positive. I hope that helps. Take care. The truth is there will never be another Batman like Kevin Conroy, and there will probably never be another man like Kevin Conroy. This is usually the part of the video where I leave off asking you guys to say some quirky phrase somewhat related to the video at hand, but in lieu of a catchphrase, I ask that you instead share your own all-time favorite memories of the character and the man behind him. So with that being said, I was your least favorite YouTuber, Vian Fuso, and I thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. I am vengeance. I am the knight. And that was V Infuso. Just remember, if you're not tuning in, then you're missing out. So, if you like the words that came out of his mouth hole, and you too would like to become a V-generate, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, nerds! And if you're not joining the fun, you're in for one... Bad day. And you know what they say about having one bad day. <laughs> Catch him next time. Same bad time. Same bad channel.